welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a cloth diaper DIY. I think I've been talking about this on Instagram for like a month now saying that I would do it because people were asking me also on my YouTube video, my, what was it? Which one? The motherhood must haves video, I think. Yeah. Yes. I talked about how I make pocket diapers for Charlotte. And that's not to say that I don't also order them because I made some orders with a couple of different companies now and I'm waiting. Also Nora's Nursery is opening a Canadian store and I'm really excited about it. But yeah, I've made these three. Just these are the clean ones that I have. Um, and they're stuffed already. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make one of these pocket diapers. So I do also use the flip style diaper covers, which is basically just this outside PUL, which stands for polyurethane laminate. The PUL on the outside, it's basically like the shell of a flip style diaper cover. And I mean, I don't have one on me, but I can insert a picture of what a flip style diaper cover looks like here. I really, really like the pocket style ones though. We, uh, I mentioned it in another video. Delilah was trying to convince me to use pocket diapers when I was talking about cloth diapering and I didn't listen to her so I made a bunch of the flip style covers and then once I tried a pocket diaper changed my life like I love these ones so much more so I'll show you guys how to make them um I'm gonna grab the pattern so this is my well-loved diaper pattern and this is the one size so this is actually for a flip style diaper cover and as you can see I punched holes where all the um, snaps go. I adapted the pattern this lady made that's free online and I'll link to it down below so you guys can print it. But this thing is amazing. You can adapt it for a bunch of different stuff and it makes the perfect diaper like it does. And they remind me of the Nora's Nursery ones except they only have the two snaps versus I think some of them have three. So I don't know if you can tell. So we've got this one that has black snaps. Um, I have like a colorful snap kit and then I've got a black and white one as well. So I've been using kind of mixing them up. This one here has all the white snaps and then I made it have two green snaps for the other side. And these ones have the rise done up. So let me just undo the rise on them. So there we go. That's the full size of them. So there's three I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera, but there are one, two, three options. So there's two, technically two options here for smaller. And then there's like the obviously released one. I'm just gonna show you guys what I do to stuff them. So this is an unstuffed cloth pocket diaper. Um, and it's got the pocket in the back here. That's why it's called a pocket diaper. So it's stretchy. This is a pre-fold, but it's turned. So typically when you buy a pre-fold, it'll have a single layer here, a double layer here, and another single layer here. So it's in thirds. I don't know if you'll be able to tell. So here's the thing. <laughs> I found that for newborn size, the full size um, cover, which, or, oh my gosh, the full size of the pre-fold, which is double this, like I cut them in half, it'll be double was way too long and there was no way to fold it to fit Charlotte. So I cut them in half and then I fold them the other way. This might be hard to picture on film like this. Anyway, folded in half like this, it makes the perfect insert for a pocket diaper. In my opinion, I use them. They're cotton, they're really absorbent and I have a lot of them. So it's nice. I don't need to buy extra inserts. I can just make these and then I don't have to buy extras. So you just fold it in half and then you shove it up in there. I would just grab it at the end and then pull my hand out. And then there, it's stuffed. And it's perfect, it lays flat, it's nice, and it works. Alright guys, 
guys. So first things first, and what I've already done, is you want to trace this pattern onto some PUL, as well as some, um, this one is like a flannelette. It's actually, I'm recycling an old flannelette sheet, and that works perfectly for us. So you'll want to cut out one of each of these, and on the inside of your uh, PUL, you'll want to mark all of where the snaps go. So on my pattern, what I did was I used um, a hole punch, and not very well, but I punched out all of where the snaps go. So that is key. And you have to use permanent marker on these because the um, I have one of these um, heat erasable pens that I use on like most of my quilting projects and my sewing and stuff. Um, and that guy's awesome. And that's what this red stuff is on the outside of this. But I used this Sharpie on this guy because um, it doesn't wipe off because this is plastic. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do before I do any sewing is I'm just gonna put this guy aside for now. And I'm going to put these snaps on. You don't need to put the ones on that are up here these ones you leave for now. You want to put these ones on first. So I'm going to count out the amount of snaps that I need. Okay. Let me just explain something really quickly. So for the rise that's on here, these three at the top of the rise are all going to be, um, like they're called male buttons. Um, so one, two, three of those. And then you need the two here and two here. So you'll need seven altogether of the male buttons. The rest are all going to be females. So they're gonna be the connectors rather than the sticky outy ones. I don't even know what they're called. So what I typically do, but you don't have to do this, is I choose like colorful ones for the outsides. Um, and then like I basically, all the male ones tend to be a color and all the female ones tend to be white or black. That's what I usually do. Time to pick my snaps. I'll link my snap kit down in the description as well if you want to get the same one I have. gonna put these guys on and I'll show you how to do that so this is my little snap applicator here um, it's very handy you need one of these to put on plastic snaps it's kind of necessary but this one came with this whole kit of snaps for like $26 I think on amazon.ca so I'm sure that you can find an American equivalent but this is the one that I got on amazon.ca it also comes with this very sharp little tool here I don't know if I can even it's basically like a thick needle. Let's see if you can even see it. There we go. It's a very thick needle um, on a handle. And this you need to puncture the fabric before you can put a snap on it. So let's do that. So now, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, well, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but I punctured all the fabric there. So all those holes are now punched and I am going to apply my snaps. So the first thing I usually do is apply the male riser snap. So that's this one. So what you do is you just take this little piece and you poke it through that spot, so it should come out. I don't know if you'll be able to tell now. Let's see if it'll. There we go. Okay, so you poke it in from the back here. So it should be this part on the back. You poke it in through there. You grab your male piece, put it over top like that, and then. You want to slide this guy. So, okay, the back flat piece of the snap should go in that little black 
thing there. And then this piece comes down, it's the little hammer, and it pushes it in. So, I'm just gonna slide this guy. It's a little tricky the first few times you do it. So it should, the snap should fit snugly in that little black part in the back. And then you just press, you use your hand, you can do it a couple times there. And then, voila, your snap is pressed on there. Let's see if I can focus it. <laughs> there we go. So the snap is now on and secure. So it squishes that little plastic piece down to secure it. So now I'm gonna do that for all the other snaps and catch back up with you. Okay. <laughs> This, this YouTuber I watch with Wendy, she's amazing. I've learned a lot of sewing stuff from her. One thing she did in her last video though, triggered me fully. She'd never cleaned out her bobbin case, ever. She didn't know. And I was kind of surprised she didn't know, but also like, there was so much stuff in there. Wendy, so much stuff. Y'all gotta clean that out. <laughs> Anyway, mine's kind of dirty right now because I was sewing with Minky, but some of the fluffy fabric she sews with, I was surprised her sewing machine was still working. Girl, rule of thumb, get your sewing machine serviced once a year at least. Once a year if you're sewing, like, very frequently. Like, girl, oil your sewing machine and get it serviced. Super important. Looking out for you. Okay, switching out my bobbin quick. Oh, that's really gross and fluffy. I highly recommend getting some of this measured tape stuff that I have on my sewing machine. It's very handy for things like measuring elastic quickly or measuring seams. So for this project you need six, or not six, what am I talking about? You need three pieces of six inch elastic. Or, three pieces of one eighth inch elastic that is six inches long. I am sorry. I am bad at things like explaining stuff. Actually, I lied, you need four pieces. I'm smart. I promise I know what I'm doing. You need four pieces. <laughs> From the pattern that we have. There we go. You will want to mark this here. So this top guy here, you'll want to mark these two lines on your PUL and on your um, cotton or polyester, whatever you picked. So let me just quickly explain. The way that I modified this is I cut off the little wings that are here. You don't need those for the pocket diaper. I mean, you could keep them on if you wanted. You don't need to cut it off the pattern, but I cut it off just because it's easier to cut out and easier to trace. There should be a little thingy here and it goes all the way across, but that's for folding over to cover the elastic on the um, pot or on the flip style cover. <laughs> I promise, I know what I'm doing. I sew all the time. Okay, so before we put on the elastic, first thing we're gonna do is do a zigzag stitch on the outside top piece of the cotton or fl um, flannelette or polyester, whatever you pick because it will fray if you do not do this. You don't need to do it along the whole thing, but definitely where you're gonna put your elastic. So just do a zigzag stitch. Take two. <laughs> Charlotte needed me yesterday, so I wasn't able to finish this DIY. So let's get back into it. All right, so here we have all of our snaps on. So the next step after you've done this is to mark these two spots, which are actually on the pattern. So what you're gonna wanna do is fold this over half an inch. And because I've been sewing for long enough, I typically can estimate half an inch, but if you aren't confident with that, I would suggest measuring it. So with PUL, something really important to remember is that you can't use pins on it. I would suggest using clips like these. These are just little sewing clips. I don't know if it'll focus on it. Ooh, come on. There we go. It's a little sewing clip. You can use paper clips as well, like the little clippy style. Oh my gosh, a clippy paper clip. Yes, you can use the pinchy style paper clips. So the reason you can't use pins with PUL is that it punctures this plastic um, 
coating, the polyurethane laminate. That's what this is. It's what makes the fabric waterproof. So do not puncture through it. Um, you want to limit how many times you go over it with the needle and thread as well if you can because any place where it's punctured it can leak. All right so I've pinned this. Um, I've marked the start and stop points. So what I'm going to do is sew it and I want to sew it a quarter of an inch from the edge. So I have a quarter inch foot on my sewing machine right now because I do a lot of quilting and that quarter inch foot is very necessary when you're a quilter. But most sewing machines have a quarter inch foot that comes with them. And you always want to do a back stitch when you start as well. So I'll do a couple of stitches and then do a back stitch. It just secures it. Okay. So there we go. That's that one sewn up. So you want to repeat this on your piece of flannelette as well or polyester, whatever you choose. So here we are, we've got both pieces done. So now what we're gonna do is grab a little, I have one here, my little dish of stuff. Just this little safety pin here. You just need something to hook to the elastic. So grab a piece of your elastic, hook this little guy just on the end. We've got our elastic, we've got it on our little safety pin. So what we're gonna do is just run it through this little channel. And my hair stuck to it. Something very important to keep in mind is that we want this little piece of elastic to meet up with that little line before we end up sewing it. So you don't want to lose it inside the casing because then you'll have to start all over. <laughs> so you just push it through a little bit and unruffle the fabric. There we go. Okay. So now my elastic's exactly at that little line. So what I'm going to do is just go a little bit in from that line, about an eighth of an inch, and sew a straight stitch down to meet our other seam, and then reverse the stitching, and go back up, and then put the stitching back, cut it. There we go. So now this here elastic is nice and secured in there. And then we'll just continue on moving that little safety pin through this little channel. You want to make sure that elastic stays straight. You don't want it twisted in there either. All right. So there's my safety pin. It came out the other side. And what you want to do is just pull that a little bit extra so that when you put your foot down, it doesn't hit the safety pin. So let's just sew that guy up the same way we did with the other one. There we go. Cut the thread. All right. And then we just pop that guy open again, take this little safety pin out, and there we go. Now it's elasticized. So you just want to repeat this step with the other piece as well. Okay. So next step. We've got the elastic on this piece and the elastic on this piece. So now what you're going to want to do is put the right sides together. Make sure that they're right sides together or else you're not going to have a very fun time later on. You're going to want to make sure that these guys are lined up. They won't be perfect a lot of the time. Nobody's perfect. So let's start at the seam there. More important that those line up. Okay. You're going to want to make sure that you just fold over these two pieces and pin that. Just kind of lining it up so that it continues on from this. So just, I'm all sniffly because of dust. I was sewing with Minky yesterday and I got dust everywhere. I hate Minky. Never sewing with Minky again. It's the worst. Does anyone else have a fabric they like absolutely hate sewing with? Because that would be Minky for me. Okay, so you just want to line these up the best you can. Don't stretch the fabric to make it work. If it doesn't work, you can always adjust things later. So you want to lay it out. And pin it the best you can all the way around. want to sew from here to here 
this piece right here at the top next to the elastic on either side, you want to sew it with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, not a quarter inch. So the reason for that is it makes it much easier for the elastic to lay flat and open once the diaper is done, but the rest of it you want to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. both of those sides done I know that they're out of the way so I am going to sew around the rest of it with a quarter inch seam allowance okay so now it's all sewn up what we're gonna do is clip this on a diagonal Let's just clip those little corners make sure not to clip your stitches there we go get those guys out of the way and then you can trim your seams if you've noticed that there's a little bit of excess fabric Feel free to do that. I'm just gonna do that here. And this seam as well. Okay, so for where you have corners or rounded edges, like this one here, what you're gonna wanna do is just clip in to a few little snips to make sure to avoid the stitches though or else you're gonna undo those stitches. It's a good rule of thumb whenever you have a curved seam to just trim the seam there. Now comes the fun part, turning it inside out or right side out, I guess. I typically just rub my fingers together a little bit, trying to get this to, you kind of want those corners to pop out. So another thing some people do is use a pencil. I'm just gonna use the very tip of my scissors, but be very careful that you don't puncture through the fabric. But I'm just gonna use that as something to sort of push that corner out a little bit. There we go. Yeah, if you don't trust yourself with the scissors doing that, make sure to use a pencil or something, like the eraser end of a pencil. It's all coming together, you guys. All right, so let me show you what it will look like on the top. So right here, this here is the elastic that we sewn in. So this, mean, this right here, when you can see that they're sort of trying to turn in together, they're trying to turn in. So that side we want to fix. And over here, they're almost laying flat, we can see. So they're laying flat together. That's the way that we want it. So here we can just put a stitch vertically like we did to secure them. We're gonna put a stitch right here, or a few stitches. On the other side, we wanna pick a couple stitches and then do the same thing. So here we are. I'm just gonna take out a couple of these little stitches here so that these elastics lay nice and flat together. So you just back it off a little bit doesn't need to be too many stitches. Like you don't want to undo the whole thing. You just want it, there we go. So that it folds over and these elastics are facing up like that, nice and flat. All right, so now I'm just gonna do that little vertical stitch once again, just to secure these. So now we just wanna make sure that all of this is lined up. All those seams are flush. So I usually just rub it with my fingers a little bit to bring it out. You can kind of see here it wants to fold not at the seam somewhere else. So we just open that up, grab that seam with our fingers, and then it's kind of like pressing it with your fingers as well, just rubbing it a little bit. That tends to help. What we're going to do is take our pattern, this guy here, and if you haven't already marked these points, you mark them now. And we're just marking where the elastic should go. So there's two different spots you can mark. You can either mark up here if you want the elastic to be a little bit tighter and down here if you want it to be a little bit more loose. So I've been putting it sort of in the middle ground actually, like where this marking is. So that's what I'm going to do. I usually mark it on one side and then just copy it to the other. I find it actually makes it slightly more symmetrical, which is surprising. So now we're gonna use that quarter inch seam allowance again. And all you're gonna do is sew a quarter inch seam allowance straight down from each point. So you go from here to here and then repeat on the other side. Now again, we're gonna pull out that handy dandy safety pin. And we're gonna do the exact same thing we did with the elastic in the last part, except this time we're starting inside the diaper. That's the only difference, but the exact same process. I find it funny that 
that cloth diapers are such like a almost political topic for some people. Like some people are swear against them. They could never ever touch poop. How could poop ever come into their life? Like how dare it? <laughs> I find it really funny though. My sister is so against cloth diapering. Well, she, I think she supports it for the environmental reasons, but she is freaked out by it. Definitely. Sorry, Ash, to throw you under the bus, but it's true. Um, <laughs> so I have a few, um, I have a few disposable diapers that I keep around in Charlotte's size. I mean, luckily my friend Christina tends to give us her whatever size that, uh, her daughter grows out of she gives us the rest of whatever she has which is nice because you don't have to buy them because I prefer not to if I can avoid it um, but yeah my sister I already know that she won't go anywhere near a cloth diaper so if she, ever she babysits Charlotte I know I'm not getting her to use these here's some of the fun part what we're doing now is sewing from the end of this elastic all the way up to the beginning of the other one what we're sewing is a top stitch. So it's a one eighth stitch or one eighth of an inch away from this edge. So it's like exactly the same stitch we were using before, just a little bit closer to the edge. It's like decorative stitching, I guess. Just makes things look a little bit neater. So your top stitching, once it's done, looks like that. I mean, yours will probably look a little bit neater than mine because I I don't care much for top stitching. I do it because I have to for certain things like this, but I'm never the best at it. <laughs> that's for sure. You want to do that on both sides. When you turn it to do the side over here, you want to start here and end up in that corner. You don't want to venture across this yet because that's a little bit trickier. So do both sides up till this corner. Here's the important thing for sewing along the snaps. What you're gonna wanna do is adjust your, your um, you can use a zipper foot for this, that might be the easiest thing. But what I'm going to do is just move my needle over so that I can just use a different guide. And you wanna do that same uh, 1 8 of an inch stitch away from the edge. But you might need to switch to a zipper foot. Luckily, I don't because my needle, I can move the position, but you want to move it to the left. Okay, let's see if Charlotte will remain happy for me to finish this video. <laughs> okay, so our very last step is just finding any loose threads and clipping them up. So you want to clip as close to the stitching as you can without actually clipping the stitching. I use a pair of these little guys. I find them so handy. Now the very last step is we are gonna put the outside snaps on. So what I do is I just line up this here. Let's see if it'll focus, there we go. I just take this little flap, line it up so that I can feel the buttons underneath. I mark the top button with my little pen. I mark the top, where I want the top snap to go so that those seams line up. Just mark that top one. I don't mark both of them because once I have the top one on, the position will shift slightly, so that's important. And you want it to lay flat when it's done up. So, hook that through here. And you put the snaps on the exact same way we did earlier. So now I'm gonna snap that one on and then adjust it just so that those lines, or those two seams sit nicely together. And then I'm gonna mark where the second one is after those two line up. There we go, unsnap. to double check we just do them both up there we go does that really nicely there so now we're just going to repeat that exact same process on this side there we go perfect and there is our cloth diaper finished and i think it's perfectly in time for a little girl to need a bone change so let's go see how this looks on her